Doom with Grimstroke. They didn't even really do the combo that much. Like that didn't feel like the key part. It just felt like they had a Doom and a Grimstroke, and those two heroes are are, are just good. They they enable the rest of the team in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You know, even what if you're means, not Zyre? popping double Dooms, what it means the Magnus that was first face banned uh, is open. Mm. I want to see some mag today, dude. I want to see news. some RPs. Let's see some Echo Sabers. Ten seconds Let's see remaining. if they're going to take it out anyways. Or if they'll go... I don't remember what was the other uh, ban in the first phase remaining. they did. But we'll see. Was it Morph? I feel like there was a Morph uh, ban. Ma yeah, I think it was actually. You're right. So maybe it's spamming Morph, dude. Uh, it, it really feels like the new Morph uh, didn't get nerfed. I thought it was a big nerf, the mana thing uh, they did. Oh, no, but it wasn't Morph. So maybe it was like 12 and 2 with Morph or something. <laughs> uh, it, it was pubs. Timber, actually. Mm. Oh, it was Timber? Okay, sorry. Yeah, Timber <laughs> and Marana uh, was also gone. He's still Morphling, though. I mean, that hero just fundamentally does so much cool stuff. I and, and Any kind of little coefficient Five tweak like that, yeah, it'll slow him down a little bit. Yeah, you're going to feel that mana, but buy a Lincoln's and you're cool, dog. Mm. Hey, it's Puck. Okay. All right, here comes Lion. <laughs> I mean, you joke, but... <laughs> it is I've... very possible. Was it really a joke? That was just a painful statement of truth. Hmm. Don't overreact. Remaining. Don't overreact. Just get the cat gyrocopter. Five just get whatever remaining. else you need. Don't get the lion. Who's the best matchup against Puck mid? Mm. DK and TA probably still. DK is pretty good. I was thinking TA, but yeah, now that we've seen DK, that is the old classic, right? Instant stun. Yeah, the instant stun, uh, you reduce a lot of his damage, so he has to overuse mana to get CS. Like, the 25% reduction is no joke. Oh, wait, whoa. Ooh, okay, so they take okay. the Rubik for the Telekinesis instead, uh, and has more, like, options in the, yeah. in the game compared to a Lion, and then they go straight for a Dusa draft with a 10th pick on their side. Okay. See, I like this way better. Rubik just feels a little more well-rounded in many ways and still good options against Puck. Big fan. Uh, also worth noting, they did ban the PL, so maybe that makes them feel a little more comfortable grabbing this Dusa. I'm actually really impressed with the way Cat has been drafting. Uh, I think we talked about it in the, in, in the first draft. Overall, it just yeah. feels like he really understands what the heroes are supposed to do, and he... Like, it's not really that, oh, okay, you pick this, so I'm going to counter with that. He's, uh, you know, he has a plan, and he just sticks to it. So, got to say, I think he's drafting really well in his first two games. Maybe take the Centaur if you aren't going to ban it. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a good... I mean, you got to be careful about the Rubik, because uh, unfortunately, Centaur is a hero <laughs> that you can't really just, like, press R and then press another spell True. Uh, to prevent the steal. But, yeah. It's good versus Medusa. Radiant I agree. Team back. Dire team back. Oh, that's another Pango one. Into the yeah. world's fastest Bloodseeker ban. <laughs> like, the Pango hadn't even started animating yet, and the Bloodseeker was already gone. Okay. The true hard counter. I guess Grimstroke, the other really good one. Pango's really good versus Medusa. Getting that uh, constant disarm on her. She only has, I guess now with the Satanic having a spell, you have a second option, but you pretty much only have Manta and uh, the Satanic to take the lucky shot out. Very nice having a hero like Pango that can pop the ult and be pretty brave jumping into a Medusa. You know, get a bunch of stun locks on her, do some damage, soften her up a little bit, mm -hmm. and have an exit plan, right? You can always hop out, do your little doodle doo spell. Do you think, no, I uh, wonder, they buffed uh, Diffusal Blade, right? Is there any chance the Spangolier uh, gets a Diffusal Blade for the... Uh, not many people do it, but it feels okay the few times I've seen it. Maybe that's just a small sample. Yeah, that's troll, like against Medusa. Probably troll good. AM Slark or Troll AM uh, Arc Warden? Mm. What are our bands? <laughs> I don't think Arc Warden is a problem here. I don't think that's uh, really a Benny hero, so they would probably take... Or like uh, AM Slark. AM I mean, probably. And hmm. I'll I second invoker. the Slark. I'm on that train. They the could Earth invoke though? her still. Pango four, Earth puck three. Good. Team oh, what? Is that hero Ma alive? Got again? some buffs. Yeah. The good talent was a carrier. really big buff. It's like 130 uh, plus 130 Jingo mastery damage. Yep. 
Ten seconds remaining. Dia team that is kind of a lot. And I mean, oh, Medusa yeah, likes timber. to be stationary too, so Wukong's command is uh, very yeah. good versus her, and it, it has a shorter cooldown now too. True. True. Which definitely helps Monkey quite a bit. Do you guys think the Rubik is going to get the shard this game? Just to, whenever Medusa gets jumped, you just drag her around like a little puppy. <sighs> with a leash. Uh, What's the cost range on that? It is, is a che yeah, cheaper force staff in some ways. If, if they really have a lot of issues with peel, that is a, a relatively cheap backup plan for the mid game. I'll, I'll give you that. Looks like it's, it's eighty five percent longer at throw range, so it's uh, it's a lot. Yeah, nice. it it is force staffy. Yeah, it's bigger than force staff. All right, all right. Dire team pick. They take the Knicks. so they're not afraid of either AM or Ursa. We have seen the AM versus Dusa matchup go sour for the AM. So, wow. A shocking pairing with our Medusa <laughs> as we get the Ogre Dusa again. Uh oh. That, that's nice already. There goes your armor. That's a good one. Soften you up. She's a stats uh, hero. You know what I would like to see, but we can't? I wanted to see the Kunkka. That, that game we had Kunkka Elder Titan, man. Yeah. The combos were so good. Like, you just hey, cannot miss it. I mean, but then you have Puck support. I think it's pretty meh. Unless no, you can play be Puck, Puck 3, Pango 4. I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Possible. Hmm. I mean, there's also still just the Invoker, too. True. Still seems kind of good. Mini but Invoker. Puck 3 might be so, kind of bad, though. This is, I, I want Gorilla's Pride to pick the DK here, because they have 10th pick, and flex it between 2 and 3. Radiant. And they should just pick their four though, or their uh, their three, I think. Yeah. Okay, they'll go LC Medusa instead with the press the attack. Oh. Wow, snap pick drow. Okay, so wow, now you really have no armor. That's kind of doubling up a little bit there, but that's cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> why do you need ET and drow? <laughs> yeah, that's a. Good, I guess good you're buffing call. the magic damage with getting the ET body in there, right? And then drow chop through. So someone get me an AC, please. <laughs> Little scary say, into LC though. It's a lot of confidence just grabbing Drow like that. Mm -hmm. I think the Drow shard is underrated. I played a, I played a game uh, against Drow Ranger, and the damage that shard does is crazy. Um, it, this is not a hero that has a lot of HP region, which is one of the things that uh, it does. It decreases HP region, but the extra damage by itself it, it feels really really strong. Yeah, the more you hit them, the more each additional yeah. hit does, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're close to a creep wave, and she like hits one of those creeps, and it works kind of like caustic finale. Where, oh, like, true. She hits once, uses multi shot, it all explodes, and you take like a Five ton of damage. Remaining. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I actually and didn't even know that it worked on creeps. That's yeah, I think it works. It's really good. The ags still splits the arrows, right? So when you get that, it applies the debuff to multiple people, so they all oh, explode. Oh, God. Yeah. All right, somebody was telling me about that build in pubs, and it's pretty nasty. Apparently. Hmm. TA Ben. So I guess they're playing Puck mid and they are lacking remaining. either an offlaner or a four. Five on Vita Mistis. Remaining. Yeah. I they could a DK tusk. for Jeep Pride, right? I'm thinking the same thing. I still like DK. Uh, okay, Wyvern ban. That's, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Although I mean, DK if they would have to contest with all those regen issues that you said, but he also has just flat plus armor, so that's always good. The tiny, maybe for Gorilla's Pride as well. Ooh. Looks yeah. kind of good. Explosion, that Ten plus armor. You have a lot of extra, you uh, have uh, some attack speed boosts there, so Five it's going to benefit from remaining. those early burst engages. Yeah, it's a lot of stun, a lot of control. Hmm. I mean, if they want a four, lots still available. Your Tusk, your Earth Spirit, still standing. What do you want versus this Medusa? You want to kite her. You want to make her hitting hard. Mirana. Oh, first band in game number one makes it to ninth pick here. Okay. Not I mean, a lot of yeah. great setups. Weird. They're kind of weird yeah. setups. Yeah, they're like, okay. I guess the Moonlight Shadow is decent versus Medusa because you get that extra move speed and uh, if there's no sentries, the fights are a little harder to take. But it doesn't feel amazing. 
I don't know. Tao's feeling. You might just be like, yeah, I'm DKing again. As you guys have pointed out, it, it does look good. Yeah. It, I, uh, mm. What about a DP? Is DP open? Yep. I think DP or Lesh as well. Like just pushing towers. Mm -hmm. It's pretty yeah. solid. That's all they need. Just create space for the Medusa. I mean, they have this ogre to buff her up. I think... I, I don't think there's a pick Gorilla's Pride can get that is bad for them. I think they have their uh, homework already done for them. I think... You know, Mistas run the risk of just getting kind of run down here. They Their front line isn't really that amazing. Like, E.T. and Pango are yeah. kind of tough, but Pango wants to jump in and out. He really wants to fight on his terms. Elder Titan, he's a he's going to be a five here, I think. So, uh, you know, he, he's he's not a tank. And Gorilla's pride, man. They're going to come online, hit that timing with Deuce's first item, her second item. You got the Bloodlust, LC to lead the charge. Just get some big follow-up damage here. Just I take mean, mid tower. That's yeah. I think all they need yeah. out of this pick. Like that, this is dealer's choice here. I think we listed three good ones. I like DK or DP. Either one is a yeah. okay in my book. Samezies or even Tiny's kind of fine. Okay, yeah. they take the there Tiny. Is. Yeah, Tiny's good too. Big burst I, I damage. I mean, yeah. they can hunt so easily in the mid game now. Like, this is so scary. Benny is gonna be. It's gonna be hard. There, there's gonna be a target on his back. Mm -hmm. The plus damage is just, or the plus armor that you get on Tiny. Uh, I mean, we had him yesterday, and I definitely underestimated. It. I thought like, yeah, the first level grows. Yeah. Like, it's like no, Same. It's, it's a lot. No, it's, it's a insane. lot of armor. <laughs> it's um, ridiculous. And it's also plus armor. Yeah, I really like this. I also feel like the Tiny can help the Medusa, uh, not only with the saves uh, with Toss, but also to help her get into the fight. So she's not gonna get kited at all, I think. So to be clear to people out there, the way this works with the uh, the armor from Drow is that you go through their base armor, all right? Mm -hmm. So it just means that if you have any of the green armor, the plus armor, then the Drow thing isn't useful versus it. That's why it's so important to have anything that gives you plus armor. Like, Tiny doesn't right. grow armor. Well, he does. He literally gets it from Grow, but he doesn't get it from his agility game. Uh, because yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't have, have agility, agility game. <laughs> yeah, right. he's, That's why I like he's a Drow. He's got no agility. We often like the Drow against like Terror Blade or Morphling, where they've got all that like insane agi. Yeah, Medusa. She's yeah. another good example. Yeah, um, and I mean, so I tiny DK Ogre perfect counter. Was also gonna get like a Solar Crest, so there's tons of extra armor they can pop on uh, into the Medusa. This mm -hmm. is looking really good for G Pride. Um, I yeah. I rate Binomistas pretty highly in mm -hmm. Division Two, but their first game didn't give me a lot of confidence, and this draft is not helping. <laughs> It's yeah, I, it feels like a little bit of an outdraft to me. Um, I mean, simple evaluation. There's just a lot more stuns on the GP side. It just feels easier for them to run at them and find these burst kills with Tiny and LC. The team fight overall is a little bit better, though, from beating misses, though. Like the big AOE combos, if they actually yeah. just sync everything together, um, it's a little bit more individualistic and single target coming out. They got to the get there, of, though. Uh, Gorilla's True. pride. They got to get there. You know, you got to survive yeah. the pickoffs. And I think that's mm -hmm. the really scary part. This, I think, is our like third or fourth time seeing Drow ET as well. And I can't really remember if it's one. I, we definitely seen Drow ET a lot. Because uh, mm -hmm. every time I say, well, the ET will get a lot of stacks up for the Drow and that'll help. And it hasn't really. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> good luck, you misses. I like it, actually. So I, I hope it works out well for them. And uh, all right. Goes our yeah. I well, feel like this Drow hero is underrated. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll see a shiny here. But uh, Medusa, it's, it's just so easy. We'll All see. right. Well, there you go, Gary. Dusa versus Drow. Where do we land? Do we concur with Mr. D2 Bowie here? Absolutely. Medusa plus Ogre plus Legion Commander. You've got all these steroids to pump into her. And it really has been so easy, as we've seen from some of these other South American games and series. But Theban, the minus armor, yep. that natural order, the Drow Ranger piercing through them. Is it going to actually stop the Dusa? It's possible if they can win the lanes. If Binomisas can do the same thing they did game one, but this time play aggressively, I think they got a shot at beating G Pride here. But they got to, it's going to be a lot harder than game one, though, Gary, because uh, the Dusa is going to be farming faster. She's got a really good um, lineup to cover her with the Tiny, the Legion, the Rubik. Like these heroes love to fight in the mid game, and they're going to be ready to protect the Medusa. Yeah, they're pretty pretty tanky. That tiny, you know, the panel mentioning the grow with all that armor, that bonus armor. Greedy on the Legion Commander is a pretty tanky fella too. And it uh, looks like Cat going to scout out the Beano Misters around that top rune, and considering making a play for it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't look like Medusa wants to move forward. Yeah. They're going to secure two runes this time on Beano Misters. 
<laughs> it's funny how last game they won the lanes after losing four runes. I just yeah, imagine what it would have been like if they actually got two runes. You know, and this time they're like, guys, no matter what, we got to get two runes, okay? I, we're not going anywhere. Just sit on this high ground here, get two runes, and then we're done. Play normally. <laughs> do, do the regular strat. Yeah. No, uh, no silly creativity. And it looks Good like E.T. is going to start in the top lane here, Gary. Uh, they're going to try and see if they can get some kind of damage or maybe even a kill onto the Dusa. It's kind of hard without a setup stun, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, E.T.'s got boots, so he can maybe chase and punch. Arrow onto the range uh, creep. He wants to TP bottom. Let the spear run through the map and get a shit ton of damage so he can smack the Legion Commander with it. <laughs> Let's follow that spirit and see where it goes. Flying through the mid lane. It's walking real fast. It, it oh, doesn't hit the creeps mid, though. Speeding across. It might tank the Legion Commander. Slow it down with some frost arrows. Overwhelming odds there. E.T. Double damage now. Plus 58. Oh, Rubik. And some big punches coming your way, but Rubik has the boots too, so he's able to create a bit of a gap between him and New Arges. Elder mm. Titan, Drow Ranger bottom. So far, not too easy for Greedy. Getting punched a hell of a lot. It's a very difficult lane for the Legion Commander Rubik. Like, these two heroes, they're not that bad. They can at least uh, shove the lane and get last hits. But the ET, if you ever try to play aggressively with the Legion and the Rubik, then the ET is going to do a lot of damage to you. It sure is. Oh, we got pause here. We can check out top lane. You can see the Marana here, Gary. He's got Boots of Speed level 1. Not normal for a Marana, but when you play against a hero like Ogre, who wants to just ignite and run at you, you need to start with the Boots of Speed. So you can just run away from the Ogre whenever he throws the ignite, and then you can turn around and smack him when he turns back around to go for the Pango. Even going to spend a Leap Charge. Thinking about that arrow. Sexy fat. Follows oh, forward, oh, leap and arrow, arrow, but it misses, slips behind the backside of the big fat ogre. That was a sure kill right there, I think, if he actually lands the arrow. Does manage to kill off the healing self, so lots of pressure being applied by this Pango Rubik. Uh, sorry, Pango Marana at the moment. Yeah, keeping the Medusa down a little bit. But again, it's uh, his cat doing his job, and he's going to have a pretty good idea. There's an Observer Ward, like you say, as the salve was cancelled by Jupiter. He's just gonna drag him all the way away from that lane. Come on, follow me. Let's go for a walkabout. Gonna bring that Pango across now, though. And Cat, first there's blood. the arrow. And first blood for Sexy Fat. It's very nice. Orbital Corrosion up in uh, 15 gold as well for the Pangolier. That's gonna be huge. Lucky Shot plus Orbital Corrosion. Hell of a lot of minus armor. And Dusa, you know, with the level 1 mana shield, not gonna be able to tank too much gonna be very nice for them do you think we will see that diffusal blade build or is it gonna go for the more natural aura utility pango i think it's actually nice to go for the diffusal blade but you know they need some more utility they, they don't got so much uh tanking heroes on the side of binomistas no nobody else can really go in first so maybe pango will just opt for the diff uh, utility build like you said I think Diffusal is really nice against tanky heroes. Medusa, Tiny with the bro, even the Legion Commander, very tanky as well with low mana pool. Yeah, it could be incredibly annoying. I'm looking into that Tiny lane. So far, there's a dead even heat between him and Minnie's Puck. And Tau yep, very, and Minnie both very the Very similar to all the other ranged versus Tiny lanes. You're just going to play for farm as a Tiny. Get that level 1 tree grab, hit creeps get the power runes on six minutes or even TP to one the silence if the enemy is playing very aggressively in front of your tower and try yeah, to get a kill. We've seen plenty of those five and a half minute rotations even before that first rune spawns. Well, there are a couple of water runes though, bottom guarded <laughs> by the Rubik so Tiny can get his refill. And he's, he's also got yep. a bounty rune just behind him too. So he's fun Gary, five. you know, every day that goes on the meta with the battle, with the water runes keep developing previously you saw supports going in for the power runes on four minutes and now you see supports going in just to protect the water rune on their side yeah. and tiny even hands the bottle over to that rubik to heal up as top lane i do catch out this medusa a little bit of, uh, ahead of herself but she turns and with the ignite there there's no swashbuckle do they have what it takes to chase down sexy fat courier they don't free courier for jupiter 
has another leap charge coming off cooldown as well. Sticks out the ready too. Well, the Pango sells back up and they've held the wave in front of their tier one. So plenty of XP going into the hands of the Radiant. Yep, Ogre just solves up the Dusa and everything is back to normal. It's very important that you don't feed away your courier in the early levels. Like, it can give a lot of gold toward to your enemy team. It's essentially a kill, to be honest. Yeah, especially when the early game is so focused on, you know, especially in the safe lane salves, right? It's, it's that regen trade. It is another salve that potentially you're going to have to be able to bring out to yourself Ooh, or lane. deny from your opponents. And yeah, Nuage is greedy. He's oh, pushed yo. a lot of damage forward, but the coil's there to allow Mini rotating into that bottom lane to pick up a double kill for the puck. Huge. Absolutely huge. And this is it. Like, the rotation you see from the mid players is when the enemy is playing aggressively in front of your tower. As you saw, Mini just TP'd in while they were going on the other Titan. Got the free two-man coil. Easy kills for him. Tiny, gonna play a little bit of pressure mid, but none of this is gonna be anything significant. Yeah, and it is that, that five and a half minute rotation. Bang on as Tao chucks a couple of spells onto the Marana, dodges away from the stomp right in between the hero and the spirit as the rune oh, spawns bottom the top and, root. and regen for mini. He got it. Feels bad. Tao is gonna get his bottle refilled though by the Rubik. You know what? I can't wait for a next patch where the bottle refills by the heroes only give you two charges. <laughs> that, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, because they did it with the water runes, realizing that it's a, yeah. a little bit crazy how much regen you're getting. I guess it's kind of hard because it's a fountain region that's refilling your bottle, right? It's the so buff. It, it's going to be like a weird coding if you ever make that happen. It's Someone someone at Valve Office is like, yeah, okay, that's too much work. We ain't doing that. <laughs> Yeah, we have to add another trigger where it's like, oh, they're not in the fountain. They're physically elsewhere on the map. Nah, they have the buff. They get the bottle refill. Simple. No no spaghetti code, please. Keep and you know, simple. if they change that, it's going to break something else in the game where nobody can play anymore. <laughs> yeah, suddenly people just don't regen in fountain. <laughs> yeah, start degenerating and losing HP. Tiny, tiny, tiny. What's he got? Magic wand coming out. Oh, greedy! He he's fighting into the level six jaw here. Oh my goodness! So painful. Ouch. And Medusa's been coiled up top. Astral Spirit comes out, stomping him up, and Mini yeah, rotates bot, get a double kill, find the kill on the Medusa up top. It really has been all I'm down to this puck, creating that space. And they take, they're taking the stacks yeah. too. Exactly. There's stacks everywhere in this jungle. Like every camp had a two stack in it so they got the kill on the dusa and they're farming the stack and like this is the kind of aggression that i was looking forward to in this game from Bidomistas. and they gotta keep doing this the entire game and it's gonna buy so much space for the jaw ranger while shutting down the dusa and g pride are always going to be on the back foot trying to come back it genuinely is. I mean, they might find the Tiny here mid as well. Again, he's in between the Hero and the Spirit, so the Stomp doesn't land. But a Rolling Thunder on the Puck door. Nice. Plenty of magic damage to burst through Tau. You know, Mister's finding the big ticket kills they need. And honestly, if you think about a team and what they want to do in this game, seven to eight minutes in, pressuring the Medusa, killing the Medusa, taking stacks, getting neutral items from the stacks at this period, finding mm -hmm. Tiny from the mid lane, it's just checkboxes galore being ticked by Bina Mister's. Exactly. And the two heroes that you want to be having a good game, the Puck and the Pango, are having it. They are extremely farmed, they got plenty of experience, and they can just keep going in every time their spells are off cooldown. Coils oh, back they, up, what are they doing? They're they going find for the, the next kill. Straight mm -hmm. into the triangle. They knew that she wouldn't be up at that top jungle without Observable. They see what's Tiny's happening, coming, so though. the Tiny has to counteract. Onto the Puck we go, but Mini has already taken down the Dusa. Nuage is zapped by the Fade Bolt. Mini, with another orb and a Fade Shift, can yeah, disjoin Take from this peeps. battle. And they're going to try and slow them with a multi-shot. Benny Gust back there, so no duel. Can't get the catch. Oh, nice the two-man avalanche, great from Tau. In we go, Mini zapped. This Fade Bolt just bursting through them, and it's Dismal that comes out with a triple kill. Wow, Benny. Oh, man. I mean, the kill onto the Dusa was nice. Puck to took the creeps too, but Benny just sitting there using multi-shot and trying to do something at this point in the game was the big mistake, I think. If he just went back to farming, the Puck could have done it himself to just get out. Instead, he had to stick around to try and help Benny as well, and they both end up dying. So even though the Dusa did die, giving away kills to the Rubik and the Tiny, the heroes that are going to be protecting you in the mid-game, not a very good idea for Binomistas.
And now, it's safe farm time for Medusa. She's sitting, what, just behind the Pango, three and a half thousand net worth. That's going to accelerate and catch up incredibly quickly. As it looks like Cat's job right now is to stack. Stack, stack, stack. Build up those camps yet again. Jupiter, he's like stopping the stacks from happening, but he's going <laughs> to die for this. Tiny is here. Uh, no, he's not even going to go for it. And just Puck is thinking instead. about turning around again. <laughs> Ogre puts his big body in the way, so Medusa won't be the focus, but a courier snipe and maybe a kill on the Ogre as they yeah. swashbuckle forward, slow them down. Mystic Snake there, just thrown onto the ET as Rubik and Tiny, they do want to get something out of the back of this, but a Rolling Thunder and that uh, Dream Coil turned around oh, by the nice Rubik who stole Rubik. it, coils up that Puck, trying to snap it with a toss back, they're bursting through Mini, but gonna get the orb away just in time. A Sexy Fat retreats, the tree toss, not enough. About 50 HP remained on the puck as the wrong thunder finally comes from Sexy Fat, aiming for the tiny. They lose that Rubik, the Gus sarsing up town, swashbuckle again with an orb forward, and that Earth Splitter destroys it. <laughs> nice silence there. Legion Commander doesn't have a TP to be able to help out in this fight, so that was a 5 versus 4 from G Pride. Dusa not really farming during this time. She's been like hitting heroes and using snakes on heroes to get these guys out of the jungle. And that is not what you want your Dusa to be doing if you're G-Pride. You just want her to be hitting creeps right now. Getting gold. Yeah, just watching this Jupiter Marana, that's how it all started, right? Contesting the stacking, killing off some of these neutral camps. Marana's yeah. a real thorn in their side. Oh, Rubik, top the puck. He's dead. Oh my god. No way. Oh, Dismar is keeping them in this. Yeah, he just got so much XP from that too. Like, he stole the waning rift, telekinesis the puck into the tower, silenced him, fade bolt, and the last two tower hits got the kill onto the puck. Well, he's now 4 2 and 0. He gets a triple kill in that triangle fight. Solar kill on the puck. He's got his ether lens. He's got his done. Ah. Yep. Very nice. I mean, this is a v amazing Rubik game, Gary. You can get. Uh, well, he's already got the shield crash, so you probably won't be getting Rolling Thunder anymore. But Puck spells, uh, Marana Arrow. Oh, we see a Tiny getting coiled right now. Yeah, a multi shot flies through and a nice arrow slides into the back of Tower's head. He's still pretty tanky. They need that oh, magic nice burst silence. from the Star Storm. Starting him up as Mini gets burst down by Dismar, trade back again by Jupiter. At least the Rubik Not gets the something. I mean, that was supposed to be a free Tiny kill, but they end up getting the Rubik for the Puck trade. So. It isn't so bad considering they are behind right now, Gary. And getting that puck kill means uh, Dusa is going to have a little bit more freedom to jungle up right now. Oh, it is all space for that Dusa. Dragonlance mm -hmm. heading into Manta. You know that once Medusa hits her timing, gets into that stride, she is a real unstoppable force just running towards your objectives. They've done a lot to shut her down, but it feels like they need to keep on going. Witchblade Puck. Does respawn, returns to that mid lane, but I don't know about you, I'd love to see a few more of those smokes get into the triangle. Ag aggression from being a is like you've been calling for. Except yeah, they they've been to... trying to go the top side, but they kind of slowed down right now because the Puck has died twice. And he was probably the one who was leading most of these smokes anyway. And now he's like, okay guys, uh, I don't want to die anymore. Tiny seems kind of strong. Ruby's got good spells. Let's just chill a bit, get our next items before we make any more aggressive moves again. Yeah, just relax a little bit. Well, now oh, they've got Hood on Pango, up. Rolling Thunder, and yeah, smoking. Uh -oh. Okay, Desmar, get in there, buddy. Go into the jungle. Don't let the Dusa get caught first. Hi, I'm a Rubik. Oh, done. oh come and kill me. Stone Gaze comes, yep. and I just realize it's not a fight he wants to take. Scripted, right, Gary? Scripted. <laughs> I got the script gonna... right here. You know exactly what hands. they should be doing. <laughs> he tanks the gank. Yep. They do still get into that triangle and make sure that Medu you know, Medusa didn't just walk back in and continue farming. Yep. She does have to Skippy transition top. up towards top lane. Knowing that they were all bottom. So, and Dusa's so happy, Gary, to farm on that left side of the map there. We see Marana just doing Marana things. Gonna get duo though. Yeah, should be the first boom. Dead. Oh, second victory, sorry, of the game there. 20 bonus damage. On to Greedy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Tiny, he sees an ET. No one to toss back to though, so I think the ET's gonna be fine here. Yep, 
Very speedy. Boots Windlace, plus that Astral Titan buff. Yeah, while we're talking about the Medusa, though, it's still a Drow Ranger top of the net worth, right? Binamisters have that big carry and could potentially be the answer to the Medusa and that incredibly farmed Gorgon. Definitely. The Silence is going to be a very nice spell. And Draw Ranger does outrange the Medusa, so she can stay very far back. Won't be getting hit by those split shots in the engagements. So she's going to be quite healthy as well. Draw Ranger has been known to be a decent counter against Dusa. Like Sniper, you know, very long range carry hero. As long as they're oh, oh, they coil the, the illusion. illusion bait! No way! It's an arrow as well no as a rolling way. thunder and a coil. Spending everything in oh. town, going to be giggling to himself right now as they do stun up Jupiter. Cat doesn't have the follow dagger. through until now with Tiny blinking in aggressively onto Mirana. Drow Ranger wants to get involved with a multi shot. Yeah, this Tiny through. so tanky, man. My goodness. Like, he just blinked in, killed the Mirana. Drow's like throwing every, everything at him, and he didn't even lose like 20% of his HP. Just walked it really away. was a. Really was a great pick and a, you know, a great shout from the panel talking about that grow and the bonus armor you get from it. Yep, he's got a DD now too. I mean, when you use that coil and then the rolling thunder on an illusion, you know you just gotta get out. Because now it's G Pride's cue to go and do something. And they're gonna smoke up again. They, they know that the puck coil and the rolling thunder are still on cooldown. They're going top. They want to get a duel onto this Marana. Let's see if they can finish her off. Quickly enough. For sure, they can. Because they got Starstorm, Blast, or Fade Bolt. Bina Misters are coming up top. Oh, Cat has actually scoured them out as that dual victory is there. Pango missing the Swashbuckle too. Very good positioning from the Ogre, spotting out the rest of the Bina Misters and now TPing home. Oh, wow. I think How is it? Ogre messed up there. He had no business TPing home. If he just turned around, Fire Blasted the Drow, the Tiny was coming in. That was a free kill on the carry. It could have been. Yeah. Maybe a little bit afraid of who was who was there behind her. Miss opportunity there from Cat. I mean, it, no matter how many heroes you may lose, a kill on that draw would be amazing right now. Especially as the Dusa has been farming up a storm. She's ahead of the draw ranger, Gary. Yeah, the balance has been upset pretty quickly. Top of the net worth, Dusa. I'm gonna finish off that Manta style with the recipe to come out to her. And it's not just her, like Tower with that Blink Dagger has caused incredible issues for the Radiant, jumping on these targets Definitely. and blowing them up. And they're going to have a Solar Crest out of Cap and reasonably soon. He's got the Medallion done, level 3 Bloodlust. So it's going to be a timing not only of items, but of levels. You know, this Ogre is going to be able to buff up Medusa, who's going to hit level 15 pretty quickly with that 30 attack speed talent. Everything comes together. So Bina Misters gathering around their drow with a Moonlight Shadow. Do you get the 30 attack speed talent or the snake? I thought mm. the snake was very powerful because it gives you more tank ability, right? It's like a HP talent, to be honest. I've I've seen... I've seen like bits and bobs of both. I, I know the snake talent... Oh, uh -oh. hang on a second. They've got drow, the catch on no. the drow, the lift and the duel. They're trying to I... take her out with the avalanche toss combo. And there it is. Benny's gone. Medusa with a stone gate, he's holding Sexy Fat in place, so the Rolling Thunder is not going to actually accomplish anything. They've disarmed the Legion, sure, but Sexy Fat's Pango. He's got to retreat. Marana, two leaps, gets away from the Avalanche. But look at Dismar's positioning. Telekinesis just going off cooldown. Gets the long range grab thanks to the Ether Lens, and that allows Tau to come in with a toss. Man, that Draw Ranger just hitting the tower all by himself in the front line. Allowing himself to get uh, telekinesis thanks to this blink dagger Rubik into a duel like you can't be doing that as a John Ranger. You need your team to go in first, and then you gotta be coming in later. That was really rough, Gary. Oh, they found the Pango. He's coming to try and defend the tower and just lost his life to Town's tiny. Yeah, well deserved losing for the tips. all their momentum. I hate to say it, Gary, but this is looking a lot like game number one. You know, win early. No idea what to do in the mid game. And then let your opponents hit their timings. And Cat's Ogre. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing in the mid lane, but a press the attack would get him away from danger. <laughs> He's out. Full retreat.
And Minnie's Puck. We've got Blink Dagger Witchblade. It really has been a halted game for some of these Radiant Cores. He looked incredibly strong earlier on. Radiant are scanning. All right, Bowie. Bowie has done the research. He says, got 10 random Medusa replays from pros. All 10 learned mana talent. Oh, nice. We got it. Concluded. The stats and the facts. The facts. Uh, we can see here, Argy is also going for the mana talent. Yeah. He absolutely is. Stay tanky. I mean, with the evasion talent as well. It becomes even more difficult to bring her down. That astral spirit. <laughs> it's always so funny to watch it waddle into a couple of heroes. Come back as the Moonlight Shadow from Bina Misters tries to get them into that lane the Medusa Blame been pushing, but... Lesion. Yeah. Which blade? They're gonna find the Rupert. down. I tried the... Focusing the Ogre. Park. Tiny's already jumped in and blown up Mini though, and now Drow Ranger isolated, dueled, and killed. G Pride. They didn't even need this Medusa. <laughs> Everyone else is winning the game for them anyway. Medusa's just the backup plan. Yep, Medusa is the uh, bomb, you know? She's the bomb in the draft. And Beta Misas, they're thinking about how to defuse the bomb. They're always, that's what's on their mind, but they're ignoring the other four heroes in the draft. Yeah, there's machine guns, there's pistols, there's knives, swords, everything else from Tiny Rubik, Legion Commander, diving in for this potential kill on Sexy Fat. We also found new orders a few seconds ago. All sorts of weaponry for G Pride. I guess getting to a point in the game where he can just sit on the high gun, push the tower. Like it doesn't matter what kind of spells go on him. ET Astral into Echo Stamp, Echo Stomp, Stamp. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's a pretty cool combo, you know, to pair up with your Puck and your Pangolier. But at this point in the game, this Dusa is just way too tanky. Yeah, they thought they had the answer with this. This ET and the Drow to pierce through the armor. They've just not been able to actually stand their ground and fight. Like, what's her effective HP with the mana shield? It's about... Like, 6,000 health? Is it 6,000? Jeez. Yeah. Well, mana shield, for each point of mana, you can oh, absorb 2.5 damage. Bye-bye. Yeah, I guess then, so plus armor, lot. plus magic resist. So that is a ridiculous amount. <laughs> Always. I, I, do you do you factor in like Mystic Snake bouncing as well? Like the fact she can replenish her mana. She's yep. basically she, she's I mean, probably got like ten thousand HP. She does. She's she's very high. I mean that's why you gotta have like some kind of mana drain or just kill everybody else and just stun her up so you can bring her down. I mean this hero is the definition of raid boss. Radiant's top tower is under that's why it's A considered monumental. one of the hardest carries in the game. Well, monumental tanky hero. Scotty, it is smoke up here, done. Gary from Legion, and this Legion is also becoming a ray boss. Like his her net worth doesn't show it, but the damage output with this blade mill is insane. Yeah, like, straight onto the ET, Slop, immediately slapping. dispatching with him, and they can just do this over and over again. Like whoever it is, it's Rubik Tiny, it's Rubik with the Legion. They're just pairing up, finding kill after kill. The Marana's wandered into sentry range. Good Gust back with the Waning Rift forward. Stolen Earth Splitter though, that's a massive land on to Benny and Jupiter as the Mystic Snake and the Stone Gaze. Holding them in place, turning them to statues of Stolen Dream Coil as well. Rubik is just getting massive ultimates time after time. Rolling Thunder though from the Pango with the help of the rest of Bina oh, Mystic. The they are dying. bursting through the Medusa. They've taken it down to about 10% HP, enough. but she still hasn't fallen. They've got Tau coming in and saving the fight Eating. for them. Medusa is surviving, turns to the Scarlet slow as the legion thinks about going for the drown but rubik bodyguarding this medusa now Argeus, Attack what do you got him. where's the help where's the rest of the he's squad been a mister oh, they're not going to find it the medusa saved again but the tiny comes in with tower the swashbuckle finally bringing her down mini chasing forward and tiny only with a few one charges doesn't have the rest of g pride behind him no buyback on Dusa, and no one here to continue the fight means that been with five alive killing them off can walk That's into the rush pit no way, the turnaround. 
Like, this is the first fight where they don't go for the Jaw Ranger first. And you can see the Jaw just... Even though she was sitting from the low ground and hitting the Dusa, it was good enough. She was starting to chunk away at this mana of the Medusa to the point where she couldn't use any Mystic Stakes anymore. And now they got Aegis. I mean, they gotta they gotta go back to what worked for them, right? Just get the Tiny onto the Jow, or get the Legion Commander to duel the Jow. That last fight, the duel was on cooldown because they started with the ET kill first. And the, the disarm from this Pango as well. Like, every Swashbuckler is aiming for that Deucer, yeah. of course. Exactly. It's really good. I mean, it's like a free Halberd, right? On an 8 second cooldown. So nasty. It's kind of interesting that... So what did Rubik get there? Rubik got Earth Splitter, he got Coil. He got a bunch of other spells in, in, in between as well, but it looked real great from Dismas stealing those massive teamfight abilities. But still, a great fight from Binamisters with you know, a buyback from Puck, a buyback from ET, sure. Expended, but well worth it as long as you keep that drow alive, get her the Aegis. And now working on a BKB. <laughs> and the game goes from what? A 4k lead from G Pride that was slowly, slowly moving upwards. Brought back down to zero. They they still need more fights like that on the side of Binomistas before they're really in a position to come back here i mean in the last engagement the et was also i think able to get on top of the uh dusa there and provide that minus armor aura onto her which is very nice but if that doesn't happen again like this et has been dying first in every fight i mean or not first i would say like second because he's still trying to get in there <laughs> i'm trying to walk it in and puck going for dagon aura. Hmm, oh, so, I don't that's, know that's about a way that to, one. To burst through the Dusa? Kappa? Crapper? <laughs> yeah, burst through the Dusa. Oh, I mean... <sighs> I, it's, it's kind of interesting, yeah. right? Going for the Witchblade and not going for the Phase Shift attack, and then swinging in... Like, you've got 25 damage, and then into Spell Amp. I think he's going this build so he can try and burst the Rubik. Like, that must be the play here. Stop the Rubik getting so many great steals. Yeah, it might just be... It's definitely a change in plan, though. Mm. You've come into this game the first 10, 15 minutes thinking, yeah, I'll go with this kind of regular puck build. Which blade, blink, boots of travel. Uh, changing things up a little bit. Moonlight Shadow, trying to get E.T. and Drow Ranger into a more favorable position, but they are under a sentry, so a lift yeah. up. Forcing the coil onto the Rubik alone as the Scardi do so. Just launching out right clicks and arrows flying into the Beanamister. Drow? Drow Ranger, she's alone here. Pango tries to crash in to save, but the duel onto Benny is going to claim her first life. The dual victory for Greedy as Dismar gets pummeled by the puck on the left hand side as the Rolling Thunder also causing a bit of havoc and allowing the full step down to low ground. Tau gets the blink, toss back up to the high ground. Drow Range is still being focused. Greedy and Argeus take her life. Benny's gone and they can now face off against Sexy Fan. A Pango's tanky and he's got another swashbuckle, aggressively moves into the Dusa. Self fuels another shield crash, but that's it. Even with the Crimson Guard and a hoodie, he's done for. <laughs> Yep, I mean, that was a perfect fight from G-Pride this time around. They went straight onto the Draw Ranger. Legion Commander dueled her first. They tried to get the draw out with the Hurricane Pike, but the toss back from the Tal, from Tal into his Dusa, able to bring her down. And that's exactly what they need to do. Just focus the draw. She's the only damage dealer on the side of Binamistas. The Puck, his game plan, very simple. Going for the Rubik, he managed to do so. He killed the Rubik first, but at the end of the day, they don't have the damage for the Dusa if the ET and the Jaw are not able to freely attack the Dusa. I, I just realized uh, I, I'd forgotten about one of my favorite things from Season 1. is the, it's the Tau Tombo. It's the tiny combo. Tombo? It's the Tombo. <laughs> I remember that. Tombo. Yeah. I mean, well. this patch, the Tombo has changed quite a bit because... Uh, one, it got nerfed, right? It does less damage. And two, people have been more focused on the physical damage aspect of Tiny now. They're going for that tree throw. Yep. Especially no with the shard. They might head back into it. We'll see after that quiver. BKB. Oh, I thought that was a quiver for the puck. puck. Right now it's 29 minutes. They're trying to get the neutral items. Radiant really need a quiver badly, Gary. Like, puck needs a quiver. That hero is something else once he gets that item. 
Draw Ranger gets uh, Spider Legs. Beautiful item for the draw. Helps. It's gonna help her kite. The Tiny, the Legion. Gets a Psychic Headband for the Rubik, which is really good. Yeah. I would have looked it on the Radiant team as well, potentially. Oh, there you go on level oh, three. Oh, they got it. There it is, Gary. There it is. The quiver for the puck. Puck can finally drop the arcane ring. <laughs> it's been holding for a good 10, 20, what, 20 minutes. You know how much damage waiting. one right click from a witch blade and a quiver is? It's like a thousand damage. It's like, it's, it's something lost. stupid. Absolutely stupid. Like, look at the puck's base int. Yeah, it, like Quiver itself is a free Dagon, right there. What was it? 400 he, range, 300 bonus magic damage. Okay, he can actually solo kill the Rubik. Like in just one volley of spells. Rubik's only got 1500 HP right now. If you can find him. Dismar with Ethel Ends and Blink, he's started to play a little... Uh, a little deeper, a little further behind the rest of his squad and they can really use that Medusa on the front lines. So again, it's going to come down to that that first strike. Whoever has the vision, whoever has that information on where the targets are first. And it looks like G-Pride. They're the ones with that information. They see them retreat from bot. They scan, they move in. They get the blink avalanche toss Tombo. And Sexy Fat dueled and killed off pretty much immediately as they stone gaze the Elder Titan. They're trying to focus a drow illusion. That's not a real one, unfortunately. They've been <laughs> kited and duped. She's out. Yeah. She's finishing her BKB now. Already, uh, she's got it. I think as soon as Pango's alive, they're gonna try and make a smoke play, and maybe get some kills on G Pride, because they can't just sit back and let this thing happen. Whatever's going on right now. And they, they finally can't. finished their big items. They can't let the die get next Roshan either. Yeah, definitely not. One minute until that fast spawn. That's why we see like Mini playing pretty far forward. Make sure that they're not lurking around and getting into the pit. Wow, I'm so confused right now. The Pangos going for Monkey King Bar instead oh, yeah. of Diffusal Blade. Like, if he's going to go a damage item, I think Diffusal is the way to go. Because, one, G Pride's heroes are way too tanky to begin with, and their mana is such an important tool for all of their cores. It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, you know, if Medusa had, like, a butterfly or something, I guess you could make the argument for it. Yeah, she's not even going for it. No. Going for the Daedalus, wants the damage. BKB Daedalus. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Huh. Very interesting. I mean, it's, it's magical damage as well, right? I guess amped up by the uh, by the ET. We'll see what they do, as you were bang on correct. Smoke out. Been a misters, want to get on the map. Try and accomplish something. But the Shadow Blade Duke Legion Greedy? Commander is going to scout them Shadow out. Blade? Greedy, they dropped the sentry too late. BKB. Uh, trying to make the jump onto the Legion. She, yeah, she's got Shadow Blade again. Arcane Rune going. As the puck Puck's does dead. zap down the Rubik. They get that big catch. Self heals by him. The Marana gets around there. So the greedy Legion onto Benny's Drow. Finds the dual victory. No buyback for Benny either. <laughs> puck is still in the back yes. lines. Trying to hunt down Cat with the help of Jupiter. They'll bring the He's Ogre dead. to his knees. Zap down by the Dagon. As the rest of G Pride realizing that that front line Hold now. can die too, is Gary. Still being chased BKB. out. Well, they're gonna toss up that sexy fat pango, but he's gonna go onto the Dusa and Puck with Marana thinking about the reinitiation and with the Rolling Thunder, they get onto Tau's Tiny. There's the arrow, the zap of the Dagon. Marana survives and earns up. In comes the ET and they've got this Dusa trap. Legion Commander with the Blade Melon Duel though. Turn it back on the sexy fat. The Elder Titan Stomp slows it down and Greedy's gonna get right clicked into the ground. A double for Mini and Medusa in a one versus three. Disarmed, arrowed, stunned, and chain disabled, held in place, can't Damn survive. It. This puck is doing so <laughs> much. Oh, the yules too. They have another yules ready. It takes a while, but they get the job done, yeah. and a five-man wipe uh -huh. for Bina Misters. Th this is the power of Witchblade Quiver Pop, Gary. That that was it, right? Went to the back line, popped the Rubik first. Sitting in the back line, the puck pops the ogre next. G Pride, they thought they had this fight in the bag because they had three cores BKB kill the John Ranger. But the moment those BKBs were down, the puck can just do whatever he wants. Public enemy number one for G Pride is not Zhao, it's Puck. How do you handle many? You gotta get him, you gotta kill him. Like, there's no other way. You cannot let your supports get picked off by this puck all by himself. 
And the supports also need to buy hood or glimmer cape. They have no magic as this right now. That's that's very that's true. Bad. Yeah. I mean solar crest on ogre, sure. Yules into the air. And that ogre getting stunned up. So much damage from the drow. As they'll wander into the Roche pit. They know that Deuce is down and very likely doesn't want to buy back even if she had it. Alright, so another freebie. Yikes. Dry Ranger with Agam Shard already, so they're gonna have to give the shard to someone else. I guess the Pangos uh, are a hero that would love to have it. Oh, it looks they like gave the, the shard to Mini. Okay. No, knock oh. them back. Break Mini the coil. Upgrade. You know, people thought that the headband was the best item for Puck, but it's not. It's Quiver. It's Quiver. It's huge. It does go for that right hand side talent tree. When Rift it, AoE and range with the cooldown. A little bit sad that doesn't have the uh, the first talent though, the silent The duration, face shift attack and dream coil attack, rapid yeah. fire. I mean he can get it on level twenty seven, the face shift attack. So And he will hit level twenty seven this game, I believe. This I don't think this is the kind of game where G Pride would just abruptly win or something like that. It feels like it's gonna go the distance. Go the distance. The question is, how far is it gonna go? Are we gonna get to 60 minutes? Are we gonna see tier five items, Gary? We're not even at tier four items yet. But are we gonna see tier five items? I don't know. Like the way Mini's playing, the, the next, the next team fight could be very decisive. They've got Aegis on the drow. <laughs> they could be also thinking about high ground themselves. Next. E Blade also amps the damage from the Witch Blade because it's magical damage, like after your initial hit. So, there's gonna be some crazy puck here, Gary. They need a pipe badly. Like, they actually just need a pipe. A hood, a pipe, like something, you'll kill Mini. Yeah, Legion Commander has a hex queued up. So, I guess they go for the aggressive move rather than the, uh, the defensive one. <laughs> How do they see that ward? Creeps just killed a bit of vision down bottom. Wait, they did? With what sentry? How did... There's a sen... Is there a sentry there? I don't know. Maybe, maybe no. I'm insane. Okay. <laughs> Not entirely can sure. I, can I rewind? I can't rewind to see what happened there, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm definitely going to go watch that back because either I am actually, <laughs> I am actually crazy or Creeps just killed a ward without, without vision. <laughs> Maybe you it was a know, Gary, Lord. Maybe it was a at t I'll tell you something. At TI1, there was a bug where Gem didn't see wards. Yeah. And there was a team, I think it was M5, that lost a game because they were sitting under a ward with their gem. Oh, no. And the enemy jumped them. I mean, there was also a period where neutral creeps shared vision with everyone, right? So, like, if you if Dyer placed a sentry, neutrals would see the Radiant Ward oh, and kill yeah. it. Oh, uh yeah. -huh. That, 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 that was there for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it was. But that's not as bad as at TI, no. losing a game because you're sitting under a ward with your gem. For sure. <laughs> I'd really get under my skin. Well, Gorilla's Pride have done a pretty good job here just dodging fights, waiting for this Aegis to start to wear down. And it looks like they're trying to angle up to wherever this mini puck is pushing, but the fairy dragon is such an elusive hero. Holy crap! He swapped his quiver with Timeless Relic. Is that good? Okay. 15% spell damage with your spell. He does have a level 5 talent. Dagon, I guess. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> he's kind of. Wait, wait, mini? Can blink away. Yeah, he's good. Tau's still coming though, they're pinging out, they're still trying to find this mini puck, but it is almost an impossible task. Yeah. You know what, Gary? I don't think I can get behind uh, the puck going for the waning rift cooldown instead of the orb cooldown. Even with the, the 25 talent? Better. I think so, yeah. Okay. Well, they find a catch. Greedy forced to BKB. <laughs> Radiant retreat back up to high ground. They forced out a stone gaze. There is a shard up on that Legion Commander and giving magic immunity to Argus, but there's the BKB from the Dusa. Trying to get away from Nessius, but it's coming. I mean, they the take the down Dismal. Puck does yeah. find the Rubik and the Yule Scepter onto Cat. Catch him with the arrow. And it looks like the Bina Misters now. Starting to dismantle Gorilla's Pride, little by little. Forcing them to get into these split push positions like Tower's moving mid. Legion Commander trying to shove out top. 
But look, look at Minnie and Sexy Fat. They know that some kind of drastic move has to be made. Tao, he's going to get jumped immediately. Greedy wants to maybe get in here, but Tao's already Dead. burst down. What the shit? on E-Blade. Hey, if he didn't pop his BKB, he's just going to get zapped. What? Yeah, she got right click down even through the BKB. I mean, he should have BKB'd right away, right? But he didn't yeah. expect that much damage to come out. But yeah, this timeless relic with the Dagon E Blade plus the ET Spirit, the natural order. This is just too much nonsense in here. And they, again, they don't have a pipe. They, they need that magic resist aura just to be able to sustain through all of that. This Rubik, he's going for a Aeon Disc. Okay, I don't think that's going to save you, buddy. I mean, what what does what does Puck have? It's like twenty plus percent spell amp, plus the ET natural order, which just reduces your your base resist. Twenty percent so spell amp. Man's got twenty seven percent spell amp. Yeah, my my tooltip's bugged, so I was trying to do some simple <laughs> maths in my head, and I I couldn't quite work it out. I was like twenty something, you know, it's in it's in that it's in that region. <laughs> And my my tooltip says fifteen, and I knew fifteen wasn't correct because he's got he's got fifteen just from the timeless relic. What's what's his next item? Kaya, Kaya Yasha maybe or Kaya Sanj? That's a good question, isn't it? Mhm. Mm More spell amp, just or even a bloodstone. So you have like a heal, and you got solid mana regen because he kind of is running out of mana. None of his items you, are giving him any mana regen right now. Do you want to go like a Shiva's guard or something? <laughs> Maybe get a bit tankier against the Deucer and a Legion Commander. Well, Bloodstone makes you tankier. He's already got yeah. like 28 armor. Or maybe when he sees the Hex on Legion, he's going to go Lincoln Sphere. Yeah, maybe. Yule's onto the <laughs> Wait, Legion. Wait, hold on. What Hex? He's going for an A on this, buddy. Oh, right. He had Hex queued up a second ago. Greedy's oh, down. Shit. Blown up completely. Just Didn't dead. even get a chance to Where? BKB. Dead Where'd for a minute and a half without buyback. There's just no buyback here for them. An arrow going to catch out Cat. Not quite. Jupiter still going to chase forward as Agam Scepter throwing Star Storms left and right. Ogre down. Buyback is available for him. But I, I love this move. Like the fact that they know that Tiny has to go and play somewhere else. He can't go mid. They immediately TP to both side lanes. So they're going to have all these lanes converging towards the dire. The, the dire base is straight off. Well, they can't really push into the high ground. Still on Medusa, she's still gonna snake you, she's still gonna right click you for a lot of damage. You, you still gotta worry about that blink lift from the Rubik. But man, this how this game has turned so quickly. Like, you know what was the turning point in this game, Gary? What was it? It was that damn quiver from the puck. <laughs> that quiver. It, we, we talked about it, right? It's like, this puck needs a quiver for them to come back, and he gets it. And the next fights just become impossible for the Rubik to exist. He's just constantly in your back lines. And now, assaulting that high ground. Tiny forced to mine a tour horn and try and jump away. Dismar getting jumped. On the Rubik immediately again. dispatched with the Rubik forced to buy back. And Medusa's BKB. I mean, yeah, sure, you're starting to go to work as this artist do so. Pop the mounter, chase them out, trying to get forward aggressively out of their base to battle, but now the earth split at the core snapped. Because of the force staff and the toss back, trying to save the Medusa. Get her the hell away from here, but they've lost cat. Ogre down. Legion Commander thinking about the move forward. Press the attack. And with the ability to blink blade mail, but there's a Lincoln Sphere here on Benny. They can't make the jump onto the Drow Ranger. <laughs> They're asking someone to pop the Lincolns so the Legion can go in with the blade mail. Wait, hold on. Do you see the Legion's damage? My god. This is like the least net worth for like damage gained by Legion Commander in this game. They've had a fair amount of dual victories, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, normally if you see a Legion with this much dual damage, you would think they're destroying. They're they carrying. were destroying. Not anymore. Yeah. The Onslaught is going to continue. No tier 3 bottom. That means Benny with a Lincoln Sphere of his own. So they've, they've got two now, don't they? Yeah, Pango has one. Benny has one. So double Lincoln Sphere here for the Drow. It's like impossible. Like, oh, <laughs> the double Lincoln Rubik. Pop. Puck Goodbye. has gone in on Rubik, dead without buyback. Many just finds the snipes they need as Legion Commander does move forward again. Can't stick on a target. And Arrow slides back behind the Medusa. Argus knows this is the last stand. You've got to try this fight or else you don't have any more. BKB from Medusa, but it completely out of mana. Press the attack on her with buyback available. You have to force it. You need to battle here, but they've lost the Legion to the massive magical damage out of Mini. 
Arrow Star Storm flies between the Deucer and the Tiny, and Bactal Region has kicked in. But they've got another creep wave arriving in about five seconds. Mini oh, been a missed So he has mana. Yeah. He's gonna fighting. jump in. Force of the mana to horn out of Tau. And a full set of racks as they can just shift in towards mid if they want to. Maybe even think about tier fours. Because Mini is okay. bursting through their backlines again. He could jump the ogre. Decides not to. No, he Goodbye. decides absolutely to. <laughs> that talent. All right, I take it all back, Gary. The talent is working out. The waiting rift one. Yep. He's got face shift attack talent again now as the arrow onto the Medusa. There we go. Chain stunning, disabling RGS. Pretty low on mana now, and the toss back not going to work. Catching sexy fat sure, but Mini is beyond godlike. The puck carrying this game for them, and the die back of Dusa should signal the end. Dead for two minutes, and a five versus one. Tau, he's got Aghanim Scepter and a Chrysalis, but I don't think he has the damage. Easy, boys. To clear through the Bina Mister's side. There's the jump, that final kill. That's all Tau wanted. One more little pick off. As he'll lose his life here to the coil and a swashbuckle and GG is called as Cat calls it. And game three is what we've lined ourselves up for. This is what you call the puck show. Even Medusa hard carry. Legion Commander with 190 damage. Triple BKBs could not exist against Witchblade and Witchblade Quiver Puck. And then he got the Dagon, and he built that into the late game, you know. He had a very clear idea, he's just gonna hunt the Rubik, 